Church. We'll call the meeting to order. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome you all to a meeting of the Board of, Ed of, Board of uh, Commissioners. I spent too long in education. Uh, and this, please know this is uh, being recorded, and uh, there are also viewers participating in the meeting. Um, the first thing on the agenda is uh, awards and recognition. Uh, we have several Challenge Coin Award winners, uh, plus we have... Uh, just a general letter of recommendation. The first one that I am going to refer to is I remember visit. I Actually, just, yeah. I'm if you're not if you're on the phone, would you please mute your mics? Sorry. Sorry about that. Thank you, John. Okay, this is addressed to the Board of Commissioners. Over the past forty years I've had occasion to contact the Pendleton Courthouse for information regarding different parcels of property near Hermiston, Oregon. This year I was referred to a gentleman by the name of Mr. Steve Churchill. Mr. Churchill provided me outstanding support. In my past contacts with individuals at the courthouse, the information they provided was frequently incomplete or required continued follow-up. When an apparent error in ownership records was recently detected, I was dreading the prolonged process I was likely to encounter before the error was corrected. Fortunately, Mr. Churchill assisted me he was prompt in his replies to my questions and helped to quickly resolve the issues. Subsequently, after the passing of a co-owner of some of the property, Mr. Churchill again was prompt and thorough with providing requested information. It is a very rare occasion for me to send an acknowledgement regarding an individual's performance. This is one of those rare occasions. Mr. Churchill is own, truly a credit to your organization and a model for other Oregon public sector employees. Willard S. Stratton. Uh, we also have several challenge coins. I'll refer the first one to uh, Commissioner Dorn. Yes, uh, we received this one from Tom Roberts, the emergency manager, and, and the recipient of the uh, challenge coin is Stephen Westfall, Umatilla County Sheriff's Office, Evidence Technician. Stephen Westfall has demonstrated true teamwork at teamwork ethic through the multiple disaster responses in Umatilla County in the past couple of years. Most notably during our response to the COVID-19 pandemic, he has stepped up to assist us with a very large logistical challenge. His willingness to help with everything from transporting and delivering medical grade PPE equipment to hard stack, hand stacking and or counting and inventorying tons of thousands of masks, gowns, gloves, etc., has been beyond expectations. He performed these tasks all while still performing his normally assigned duties. This assistance has proven invaluable to the overall capacity and capabilities of the local pandemic response and has been appreciated. Thanks to Stephen for all the extra hard work and his continued dedication to his friends, neighbors, and community. I have another from a uh, nomination from Alicia Lundgren and Lisa Mendoza. The recipient is Kelsey Reyes. Kelsey, over the, over the past year, Kelsey has spearheaded working on multiple fronts to bring COVID-19 vaccines to residents and coordinated critical vaccine clinics for these vulnerable individuals. She has also worked with the healthcare facilities to deliver vaccines, to make sure all three vaccines are available throughout the county. Most recently, she coordinated the vaccination booth at the Umatilla County Fair. During the week of the fair, she made sure each vaccination partner working at the booth had the vaccine supplies, parking passes, and so much more to ensure that each day at the fair, to ensure that each day at the fair, vaccines were available to fair growers. Fair goers. While a lot of the last minute coordination was happening at the fair, she also took the lead on helping to ensure a vaccination plan for over 200 migrant farm workers coming into the county during the same week. Kelsey goes above and beyond in her work and always puts the needs of the community first. 
In particular, she demonstrated her this commitment while juggling multiple vaccine events and community partners to help support one of the highest vaccination rate weeks since the COVID-19 has been available. Kelsey, yeah. you just stand and be recognized, please. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with us this morning. Finally, you don't have anything, John. No. no. Fi finally, another one from Alicia Lundgren. This recipient is Dr. Jonathan Hitzman. Dr. Hitzman, the public health officer during the COVID-19 pandemic, has become a resource not only to the public health team, but also to the community. Dr. Hitzman is committed to ensuring the health and safety of the community while traveling out of the country during the first weeks of COVID-19 in Umatilla County, he had daily phone calls with the public health director despite a 12-hour time difference. He has particularly participated in weekly planning meetings and discussions, been on countless radio shows, and interviewed by local, state, and national media. Recently, he offered his time to be present at open community forums to provide answers to questions about the COVID-19 vaccine. He, was willingly tra he has willingly traveled to locations throughout the county. He has participated in both English and Spanish speaking conversations, all to help share the science and facts about COVID-19 vaccine. He has self selflessly provided his time and expertise to serve the residents of Umatilla County in order to share information to save lives. I'm sorry Dr. Hisman could not be here. He also practices uh, medicine in addition to what he does for the county. Um, I will say at the outset, the, the position of medical director when I first approached Dr. Hitzman about taking the position was not what it is today. Uh, it has grown to be much, much bigger. We are very, very fortunate to have someone with the respect, admiration, and, and skill that Dr. Hitzman brings to this uh, as the primary spokesman for the county. I believe it has helped us immensely throughout the process. So thank you all for recognizing Dr. Hitzman. Commissioner Dorn or Schaefer, do you wish to add? I, I, I have, as a new guy on the block, I have definitely enjoyed his input during the pandemic, but even on, on other subjects, when it comes to hospital beds and other information, it's been nothing but professional. I don't believe we have any minutes of previous meetings. Not today. Uh, in terms of an addition to the agenda, uh, Umatilla County has been invited to join other counties in Oregon that are contributing to create a Vietnam Memorial. I would like to place that item on the agenda uh, for consideration this morning. Second. Okay. All right. We're now going in to move into the first item on the agenda which is the West County Homeless Shelter Discussion. Uh, we will start uh, with anyone, well, we'll start with Commissioner Dorn and then we'll go to the guidelines. Okay. Thanks, Chairman Murdoch. Um, I think a background, I'm gonna try and speak up so you guys can hear me, but um, a little bit of background on how we got to where we are now, and then maybe a little bit of information on the, uh, what we're looking at as one of the options on the map. So. How we got to where we are is this year, the uh, Oregon State passed a bill called the House Bill 3115. So by January 2023, municipalities, and in this case, that would include the county at large, all have to have a established homeless or a place to move transient folks to or those folks are legal to sleep anywhere in a public place. Um, right now we have a gentleman that sleeps on the bench in the front of Stafford Hansel each day. Um, I've had lots of conversations with him. Um, he actually works um, and then sleeps on the bench and trying to make enough money to uh, get to Florida. And I've actually contributed to his uh, ticket and, and he hopes to leave by Monday. Um, but that doesn't mean that, excuse me just a minute, Kathy? In the, I'll be in the back of the room, Chairman, what? just so they stay, two more people. I don't know what rules we're under anymore, Melinda, help me. I drove from Hermiston. Right. They are also from Hermiston. 
No, no, I'm just trying to figure out the... Well, really, people, they're supposed to be six feet apart, which, you know, is difficult because these people can't hear very well. All right, we'll um, have two more in the back. And they can yeah. come in, okay. And I think family members can still be Yeah, we're all too. families. And they're all families. Right, we can be with them. So I, I think... Right, that's fine. Good. So, um, so the, the, we have to, we, it's not an option to us, we have to find a solution to our homeless issues, um, or, or, or our public places, our public parks, our public buildings, our public sidewalks, all become uh, the homeless shelter. And we've seen what happened in Portland, and it is happening in Portland. And if you want to go to Salem, it, 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 downtown Salem, it, it's very much the same. I don't want that to happen on my watch, and I don't think either of these commissioners want to see that happen anywhere in the county. So we're in the process of trying to identify solutions. Um, there is a group, the managers um, from each of the cities, Echo, Stanfield, Hermiston and Umatilla, and I have been involved from the county level on trying to identify at least a temporary solution until we can find a permanent solution. Now, Representative Greg Smith found money in the last legislature to help with that cause, um, and now we're up actually against two separate uh, issues. One is Umatilla and Hermiston do not have warming stations for this year, um, so there's nowhere for the, those folks to go, and neither have homeless uh, facilities for those folks to go to. At the same time, Umatilla County is remodeling the jail and so that we can address some of the other issues beyond the homeless, the uh, mental issues, the addiction issues, in a different way than, than it's been done in the past. So with that said, this group, the managers and myself, uh, along with the input from a group called Stepping Stones, which seems to be the only group that has stepped up um, to advance or at least to help try to find solutions, um, and one of the early, early ideas was if the West End had one location, then, then all of, we, we, we could satisfy all of the city's legal requirements uh, for a, a specific spot for the homeless. Now, that's actually being, being challenged by some homeless um, throughout the state. The Ninth Circuit Court, it's under advice to them right now. But in the meantime, they have said that you can have regional facilities so that the municipalities can take advantage of one site, uh, multiple, multiple uh, facilities. So with that said, we've looked at several different sites. Um, they've made offers on sites that, that have not um, come to fruition. And as we get closer to winter, again, we, we still need warming stations for Umatilla and Hermiston. This site came up because it's owned by the county. And so that got thrown into the mix as a temporary site. So a little bit of background on this site. The county has, owns this site. Granite Construction has a lease for eight acres. It's a total of 18 acres. And I think one of the big misconceptions through the, the media right now is that we're looking at a 10-acre site. Um, 10 acres is what's left available to the county without, without um, vacating the lease they have with Granite. And, and both Granite and us have no desire into to, uh, voiding that lease, at, at least right now, by any means. So. What that left was at the last meeting on September 8th, I made a motion, and these guys second and approved, to have negotiations on one and a half to two acres on the north end of this piece of property. That's why all these maps that you see have this dashed line. That's two acres. So what we're really looking at is one to two acres 
a temporary, and again, this is just, right now it's just in planning stages, and I'll tell you the one good thing about all the information that's out there, there have been a lot of other people that have offered a lot of other sites. Now, most of them aren't ready to be done. Some want to lease, some want to, to uh, sell. Um, so there's, there's, they, they are in different s stages of being um, evaluated. But keep in mind, we still have to have a solution for our warming station for this, this winter, which we don't have right now. So the idea right now is for this to be a temporary facility, fenced temporary facility. <laughs> and I know you see this map just because it's aerial. It shows this mobile home here. That's actually on the other piece of, next, the piece of property next to it. <laughs> the temporary facility would be a modular or if you, if, um, if, if you've seen them before, the modules, they look almost like construction offices. <coughs> they, have, they have restroom, so they have um, minimal kitchen facilities, they have a meeting area, and then they have several um, breakout rooms. And you can do that, being modular, you can put one, two, three, or whatever, whatever the need is. But again, it's temporary. This, this site has power right here. At this point, it doesn't have water and it doesn't have sewage. So uh, we could uh, try and uh, drill a well or, or buy water or um, however it, it, it got supplied. But then, again, being a temporary facility, we would probably use a pump and haul off, whether it's to the city of Umatilla or to the city of Hermiston. But the sewage would be pumped and hauled off. permanent but at this point there's no zoning change because this is inside the Umatilla um, urban growth boundary so this is actually Umatilla city Umatilla urban growth boundary so under a conditional use permit is what how this would operate we would not change zoning would not change um, the, the um, uh, we, we would not subdivide this 18 acres for this. We would just use a, sub, a, uh, a uh, conditional use permit for that area only. And that has a boundary on it. That, that does have a, not legally, but it does have a boundary on it for negotiations established by our, the vote of this board. So hopefully, hopefully that explains where we are on that portion of it. And then the other, the other reason this property was looked at is the transportation. The, sit, the cities of Hermiston, it's called the STIF program. Anyway, long story short, we have a very efficient busing system right now through Kayak and others. Um, and then the question comes up, what about after hours? Well, the cities all have franchises with the taxi company and vouchers um, would be put in place if there was a somebody that had to leave in the middle of the night, you just wouldn't kick them out on the street. You would give them a taxi ride to where their destination would be, the hospital or, or, or however, wherever they would need to go. Um, so that bus runs down 395. This would be a loop down the Union Street and then out. So there is transportation for these folks 24-7, um, and, and they can come and go, uh, but it gives them a place where they can actually um, locate. Now, this piece of property, I think all of you guys know, is owned by the BLM. The BLM, under federal laws, and I've talked to Wayne Munger, or the regional manager for BLM, they, they, they may be under federal, if that's actually a, a usable site, they, they may be under federal um, status that they have to use that site. So um, that, that, again, that would be a, a different discussion. We really don't, we would rather see the BLM use that for other, other, um, uh, other 
uh, projects. But th that is also an option that is going to be um, going to have to be looked at if, if this one doesn't work for any reason or if, the, if any of the others don't work. I think I kind of covered everything and how and why we got to where we are. It's not a, it's not a choice for us. We have to find a solution um, legally and, and in partnership with the cities. The county's not the lead on this. It's just that's county property, and that's and, and uh, but we are supporting this program. We are supporting trying to find a solution, um, and we know the need for the solution. Like I mentioned at the very start, the one thing I don't want, and I I, I just can't emphasize enough is we cannot let Umatilla County become Salem and Portland and, and Eugene right now. That's a mess, and. Uh, there's all different kinds of reasons for it there than there are here. Um, but for those that don't think we have a homeless problem, um, we do. We do. Um, and we need to find a solution for it. So, I'll, Chairman Murdoch, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to you. Okay. Um, question, Dad? <coughs> Ask him a question? Is it, is it state mandated or federal mandated? This State. It's state mandated. It's a state, it's a state mandated. It's House Bill 3115. Not federal. Not federal. Okay. There, there are federal mandates, but in our case, we need to solve the state state mandate. Okay, before we go into uh, receiving comment, uh, I would point out, I think there has been some confusion uh, about the fact that that this is to serve all of Umatilla County, even Boardman, I think, we, I heard the name, but it really is focused on the West County. Pendleton has a warming shelter, Pendleton has a homeless shelter, so uh, those are already in place. One of them is two blocks that, that way, and one of them is two blocks that way, so from where we're sitting right now, so Pendleton really isn't an issue at this point. So with that, um, Anybody wishing to speak, we'd, we'd ask you, because of the number of people I think want to speak, uh, if you'd speak for for no more than three minutes. Uh, hope, question? Uh, hopefully you'll come to the podium, uh, if you're able to come to the podium. Uh, we'd ask that you identify yourself, uh, your name, and your address. Okay? So, that's the guideline. So, who would like to speak first? Oh, first, you have to yeah, be a yeah. yeah. I'll go. Um, can you let Ronnie go first? Oh, he has oh. a meeting he has oh, to go to. Oh, I thought he was leaving for a meeting. Oh. I, I did too much. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald A. Williams, I own property at 81675 Lindrum. Okay. So, first off, you have children within a quarter to a half a mile of that place. Right around the corner of the pond, uh, HID's pond. Uh, going down to Cooney Lane. There's a lot of little kids in there. Second thing, Granite runs their 10-yard loader down the road to Union Street to Amazon's gravel pit probably 20 times a day. You get them people walking out there, that loader guy's going to have a problem. And then, uh, we, wouldn't it be better to sell that piece of property and put it on the tax rolls and you and let the feds give you some property somewhere? Cause like due to Amazon last night I learned, PGG sold their ground at Feedville Road and their 100 acres. And Amazon, all the light industrial ground, I've, I've subdivided my place all I want to. I'm putting the rest in trust. And I have people come to me at least once a month wanting to buy an acre or two of ground from me. And all the light industrial ground, they're not, nobody's making anymore. And it's pretty valuable. So that's just a good thought. It'd be better to sell it and let the county make some money on it. And wouldn't it be better to put it either in Hermiston or the south end of Hermiston to be central for all four cities? Another I, thought. We're gonna, this is our IT guy. He's gonna. Our, our phone has uh, needs to be reconnected. 
We want to make sure everybody gets a chance to speak. Yeah. So sorry to interrupt you. Because that place is a long ways from services for food, water, any of that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Just my thoughts. Thanks, Ron. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will leave you there with the next two Me? Yes. Hi, I'm Cynthia Trainer, uh, T R A N E R. I live at 81187 Sagebrush Road, and I've owned my property since 2008. And um, first of all, my biggest concern is is our limited resources with the Umatilla County Sheriff's Office. For example, about 10 years ago, I had bullets penetrating my house because some drunks decided they were going to shoot at the stop sign and it took them 15 to 20 minutes to show up. No, no follow-up on the whole investigation whatsoever. I was told by Sheriff Rowan that there was other more pressing situations going on and that nobody was injured or hurt. So you can imagine how that made me feel. So we always have drug running going up and down Sagebrush Road constantly. Our sheriffs have been out there. We have a couple of known meth houses. We had a shooting on Benzel Road. We had a body that was found on um, Baggett Lane. I have seen transient people mulling around. They walk around up and down Sagebrush Road, kind of scoping things out. I don't want to say that I'm profiling, but I have experience going through the police academy. I worked at DOC for seven years before my knee replacements. I am a business owner. My husband owns a business on Joy Lane, which is a plumbing shop. We've had it broken into about nine times. Uh, several of the stuff we haven't even recovered. This is an issue for me. It's going to lower the value of my property. It is in the development for Umatilla County, so it's prime property for development for businesses, which I would like to see more of. I don't want a homeless camp located a mile from my home. Um, I am totally opposed to this. I, I am very sympathetic. I own two commercial buildings in Hermiston, and I'm right by the uh, food pod. So when they put that kayak in, that bus stop there, I have a bunch of transient people mowing around all of our businesses in that two block radius, and there's nine businesses. I've watched from one location, my other building, a lady going around really slow, looking at my empty building because it was for rent, go by the Eastern Mobile Slaughter, come through the back alley. Three times she circled my building looking at it. I had a guy going off screaming and yelling as I was moving my stuff into my building and you know making this kind of gestures with his hands like shooting and then I looked over and he says, what the F are you looking at B? And then he went like this. I mean, the guy was totally not with it. I had to call the police department. So I know there's an issue. I see it. And, you know, I don't know what to do about it. I just don't feel that that location is going to be the best suited. I mean, I was driving here from Hermiston. You have tons of land out there west of Pendleton. Why don't you do away with your two facilities you have here, combined into one big one? out there and use some of that land. I'm surely the county owns land out there. I just don't think that right smack in the area where you have it, where there's obvious homes all up and down that area, people are buying four acre lots out off of Sagebrush Road. Hendon Construction just built a big brand new beautiful home on Benzel Road. He's less than a half a mile from this location. I mean, you know, I don't want to have my stuff stolen. I've had people stealing stuff all the time and take it to RS Recycling. I, I'm opposed to the whole thing. That's an echo of what she said. It's an echo of what I'm saying. If, if, you, if you're on your phone, please push your mute button, please. Thank you. So that's all I have to say. Um, I know there's an issue. I'm not cold-hearted to it. Um, I've went on mission trips 
to serve Seattle. I've seen homeless camps. Another big concern is, is where's the accountability? I've been to a homeless camp in Seattle where there was an accountability. You come on here with drugs or you're drinking. They keep the facilities on their property clean. This, and what's temporary? Once something gets put in, it seems like it doesn't go away. Yes. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> to the matter of clarity, the two facilities in Pennington are not county. One is owned by Capco, the other is owned by Neighbor to Neighbor. So right, but we could have a bigger facility that could accommodate both your, what you have going on, because surely you've probably outgrown maybe yours or maybe the need for more, and have a bigger facility where it can accommodate. But it, I just don't see it in a light industrial area where there's value, where there's homes being built. Um, the traffic flow, I just, it's not... I don't want it. I'm a mile away. I have issues already on Sagebrush Road. There's no sheriff's department that responds in a timely manner. I had bullets penetrating my house, and it took them 15 to 20 minutes to show up. Okay, we have another lady. Hi, I'm Kim Nobles. I live at 81299 Bensel Road, or excuse me, Cooney Lane. I'm right on the corner of Cooney and Bensel. And I speak for my, my family, a lot of them aren't here. The property, if you can refer to the map along Lind Road and Bensel Road and the asphalt plant are all parts of family property that have been in my family for over 80 years. If you go all the way down to the Old River Road and all the way out Lind Road, all those parcels are owned by my family members that are in their 80s. It's not safe, they have grandchildren living with them. Once again, we can remind those who are on the line to please mute. Thank you. So I, wa I wanted to bring up the fact about Hermiston not having a warming center. I just read on their website yesterday they're being relocated into the ARC building in Hermiston, which is right centrally located to things. I, we have a huge homeless problem, and they need help, and they need resources, and they need access to things. So this, uh, this problem proposal of one to two acres out here is not going to be enough for our homeless situation, much less if Pendleton or any of these others, and Pendleton could, if it's a regional center, send their homeless there. You're going to have a lot of homeless coming to the area, so I do see the future line moving down since that is owned by county land. And just to explain to those on Zoom, that one strip right there of county land is in the UGA urban growth area. That's why the Umatilla Sheriff Department is the company who monitors it and takes care of any criminal activity. That's why. And so the city of Hermiston goes right up to Bensel. The city of Umatilla goes right up to, I believe, Union. And we cannot get, I have a lot of properties I manage. I've called the Sheriff's Department. They've come out and told me they're not staffed. They can't be there unless it's homicide or, or a threat of life. They don't come for criminal charges. Our new law in Oregon that do, has decriminalized the drug, carrying drugs, is just going to encourage the people that do, are drug dependent to openly use it and congregate in an area like this. Now, besides that, the safety of the homeless is what I'm concerned with. They need access to grocery stores. Some of them won't take the bus. And the bus transportation, that road that's labeled where you see access on Bensel, all the way downland road that whole parcel is a gravel road they did not pave it they stopped the city of umatilla stopped with their utilities and their pavement that is gravel potholed i'd like to present some of these pictures because i don't think the commissioners have been really shown a true uh pictures of that property this is directly across the street from and this is huge pro, um, asphalt crushing equipment they blast with dynamite. There's three pits. The Blue Mountain pit right there, the, um, the pit on down the road that Amazon owns, they blast with dynamite. And by the way, that Blue Mountain pit, that vacant land to the left of it, is an additional 30 acres they have a lease on from the nobles. That's a 99-year lease. They're not going anywhere. When they blast, and they our houses rock, our foundations, to have a homeless site there, and then when they're crushing rock three to four times a year for one month for each duration, 
it is like freight trains. It's like um, a rail yard. Are you going to put homeless people with mental, you know, mentally ill people or veterans that have, you know, combat fatalities that hear those explosions going off? Or are you going to have mentally impaired people walking through that asphalt plant? The Yukon Corporation that is leasing that asphalt plant, they would like to be here to tell you the safety, the, the issues of all that big equipment and any people that are happen to walk in there. It's, it's very, very scary. Um, it's just an unsuitable location. They, the people that don't take the, the kayak transportation system, um, they're going to be walking down Lynn. They're going to be walking down Bensel and walking down Highway 395. There's no lighting, there's no shoulder, there's multiple accidents on Bensel and Highway 395. The S turns on Bensel when you go towards the old river road because with no shade and no protection, 104 degree weather, those people are gonna be looking for water, some place to cool off. They're gonna be going towards the river or they're going to, gonna to go to, there's a pond right there in the S turns, just not even 16th mile away. Um, that the Hermiston Irrigation Company owns, and that's the canal irrigation water. People are going to be in there. They're going to be trying to cool off in the water. We don't have the law enforcement to enforce that section. You know, so, and the, the other thing is, is why would the county take on the burden and the liability of the lawsuits? I just Googled to find out how much does real estate values decrease around homeless shelters. And I happened to see the lawsuits that came up of the homeless people that are suing the cities for not being given equal, adequate living situations. And they're being awarded it. So why would the county take on liability and burden for Pendleton and Umatilla and these other cities? I mean, I would think, let them get their own places and their own liability and their own burden. And have you, we need to have a, why put $1 million grant into a one acre or one and a half acre parcel that you're calling temporary. Find a location that you can invest that money in and make it nice and something that the homeless can rise up from and have a place to start from and get their resources needed. We've got some really good organizations. Stepping Stones does a great job. Um, back to the children in the area. You know, those homeless camps do have a lot of criminals. And there are pedophiles and there are people that have been convicted of child crimes. I went around and I've got a list of all the children that are within a half mile area. And there are 23 children located right close to that site. Those parents are very upset. They couldn't be here today because they work and it's a nine, nine o'clock meeting. Um, I'm trying to be really fast on this stuff. Um, yeah, and so I have a couple pictures I'd like you to see because it's not safe. The biggest thing is it's just not safe. It's there's, like I said, no shade, no water, no sewer. The, the trailer right on that end of the border there has had the sheriff department out there multiple times. It's a Hispanic um, group of guys that live there. And they shoot their guns in the air. And they even pulled their guns on the sheriff when he pulled up. I know because I lived out there. I know the history. The houses on the left are homes that I manage. I know the renters that are in there that have children. I know that my Aunt Neva, who's in her 80s, is the one that has the 20-acre parcel at the top of the hill there. It's a dangerous, dangerous, we're just putting our foot into a situation that you're not gonna wanna look at down the road. Uh, the, let's see, the, I do believe that that one to two acres will expand. We're gonna have so many homeless that need help that you are going to end up expanding it for the need of it. The only reason it's called temporary, I believe, is because it's still in the Ninth Circuit Court. Once the courts rule, yes, you can have a regional center, boom, that county property is going to full-fledged turn into a, a homeless camp. And we don't have the resources to take on that many people in the little town of Hermiston. Hermiston and McNary, we just don't have the resources. Uh, this is a list of all the children and their ages that live within a half mile of, not all of them. This is only the ones that I talked to. This was approved through the board without any of us knowing about it. That's right. I talked to the neighbors and they had no idea. So we're really upset that you, we would like you to table this. Get more information, have a crew or go out and look at that, listen to the noise, look at the unsafe situation that you're putting the homeless in. And give your time to, to reevaluate this decision. I know I only have a few more days before I need to file an appeal, to appeal the decision. And I'd like clarification. Is that what I need to do to, you know, put a pause on this? Do I need to file an appeal? What the motion on September 8th was to 
enter into negotiations or the authorization to enter into negotiations for one and a half to two acres. There's been no, no motion to accept a contract. There's been, all we are is in discussion process. Oh, good. So it's still open for discussion that it's not definitely set on that site. Is that it, what I It's understand? not, but it is a very prime site. So I, I, well, I, I hate to say prime. Like you said, there's no sewer. The water, right. just to inform you about the city of Umatilla, that's the reason why Stock, Mr. Stockdale is so on this is he wants the people off his river and he needs to have a place to send the homeless. Uh, they just went down to Power City, which is just down the road of Lynn, informed all those people that their water sources are not acceptable, and they want them to hook into the water line that Amazon brought up. Amazon is just down the road on Lynn. It's outside of the picture there. Um, so digging a well, if they're saying that the water is not good in Power City, and Mr. Williams, who was sitting here, was informing me his well, which is on the right side of Lynn Road, is not a good well, I, I don't think you're going to find adequate water. If you think you're going to get it from the neighbors, because that was mentioned in the last meeting that maybe the neighbor would share water, I'll tell you right now, the asphalt plant, who has a beautiful well, will not have permission to share their water because we don't want it there. But We're going to need to let some of okay. speak. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I'd like to leave this. I certainly appreciate the depth of your research. Yes, and, and um, if you don't mind, I'll leave Thank a copy you. of what I was going to say because it has some more information that, that might be Thank you. helpful. Thank you. Hey, I forgot one thing. Can I? Well, we first, first, Mr. Tully. Ron, I know you. One thing's going to take a while. No, no. <laughs> Mr. Tully <laughs> told you. a very reliable source of mine oh, that he will not run you. kayak transit out there on that gravel road. What, and, and we're anticipating that, yeah. So. That, 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 road, that road is actually it's scheduled to get uh, okay. uh, oil matted here in the near future. Okay, others who wish to speak. Sam Nobles, 81776 <clears throat> Lynn Road. I only got two maps here. I'd like to give one to you, Mr. Schaefer and Mr. Dorn here. I X a couple places up there on that map if you notice. Uh, you know, the Umatella City, uh, we got a lot of money down there from the uh, Amazon Corporation. As having a warming house, we've got a senior center down there in Umatel and it's not being used. The power is there, the sewer is there. We used to eat our meals in there, but now uh, since Heidi's been doing it through the school program, it's a great place for a warming house for the city of Umatella. They need to step forward and they need to bite the bullet like all cities need to do, like Pendleton, Pendleton Freewater. And number two, if you look on that map I gave you, the county owns property right down on Bowden Lane. You see the little X down there where they got a gravel pit and they're not using it no more? It's right above the short stop or the truck stop. <clears throat> it's an ideal place uh, for short term because it's close to the uh, two hospitals or the two doctor's offices and it's uh, the Umatilla PD is 10 minutes the two fire stations are 10 minutes from that location and another great location is at the end of Scapa Horn Drive if you look on your map and you find Scapa Horn Drive off of Highway 230 it's some county ground that they took back for taxes there's a well down there there's power down there <coughs> It's close to the uh, park for the uh, McNary Dam, where these people would have places for their kids to play. Uh, they're, they're, and it's a great world walking in through there from 7.30 because it's paved all the way. So my point is, there's a lot better places than Lynn Road. And I don't know why <coughs> Kathy Lloyd and Stepping Stone, those people didn't get a hold of us, some of us people in Umatella, to, to show them these, and you guys, you know, I, I'm sure you don't, but if you'd like to come down and have a cup of coffee, Mr. Schaefer or Mr. Dorn, and we can, I can show you these places, and it can be done immediately. I mean, like I said, there's no homes there. They took the homes off, but it's on that canal <clears throat> going from McNary Dam and feeding that wastewater into the Bourbon Project. It's an ideal location, and we could have it done in 30 days. 
So I'd like for you to look at those points because we need to do something with the homeless. And they need something besides being stuck on Lynn Road where they got nothing. They need a place closer to a park, closer to a soccer field, closer to hospitals, closer to police protection. So make you Matella bite the bullet and take care of their own. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Good morning. Good morning. I'm Clay Nobles. I live at 650 Monroe Street in Umatilla. I'm 87 years old, but I have a younger sister who is 83. She lives in that house up in the upper left-hand corner, right up, upper left-hand corner, there's your left, and right across the road. And my brother Sam, who you're going to do, is 84 years old, lives just down the road. They would be easy targets for young homeless who typically walk around the homeless area. So we certainly object to any uh, homeless area in that area on, on that basis. I have 15 rental properties along Lynn Road, Benzel Road, and Cooney Lane. You can imagine what would happen in trying to rent those houses. I have no trouble now. But no one's going to want to live next to a homeless camp. Also, I have two 25-acre farms in there on Lynn Road and Benson. Uh, my, my sister and my two brothers and myself, we own granite. We own the land. It's a 60-acre site. Granite leases from Atlee. But we own the land. And uh, there was some mention about it. We own the well on that land. There was some mention about maybe you could use the well. Well, I'm telling you, I'd object strenuously to using our well for that homeless site. And if they drill their own well, you can imagine what the, uh, I've got about 14 wells on that area, what it'll do to the water table if they drill a well deep enough to support this many people, it'll lower the water table and probably lower all our wells. So in summary, I just want to tell you that I, I seriously object to this site. Thank you. Thank you. Others who wish to speak. Gentleman in the back. I don't know if you were here or not when I asked that people give the name and address before they. Yeah, I didn't hear you. Okay. Now my name is Danny Evans. I uh, live on 30231 Benzel Road, right in the bottom left-hand corner of that that picture. There's a pond. I own that land that that pond is on. And uh, my big concern is uh, in the summertime when it gets 110 degrees and there's homeless people down there, they're going to be coming up staying in those trees there and that's really, and swimming in that pond and everything else and I, I, I would like to object to having that site there. I have uh, a grandson that's 12 years old that likes to play there and he has friends over a lot but my main concern is that I have uh, several out buildings there that uh, every time you have to go in there you'd have to probably carry your gun just because there might be somebody in there and I just don't think that's a good location anyway. I mean, I heard all the objections from the people. It, it seemed to me that your your site that you picked should be a lot closer to the town because I don't see why any homeless person would want to live out there in the sagebrush. And uh, also, the uh, 
shut up again? Yeah. Like you just do your job. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, there's probably a bunch of people on it. All right, you guys just sent me a note. Same <laughs> cousin now. Also, the, the response for the fire department is real slow out there. I know I had a fire on my place this year, and uh, it took them a long time to get there. And after they got there, uh, their fire trucks didn't work. They didn't have any water, and, and uh, I almost got my house burnt down. And I've called the police several times for people shooting my pets ducks and stuff like that on my pond and it takes forever for them to get there. In fact, most of the time they don't come. They'll just tell you, we'll come out there tomorrow and talk to you or something. And it's a big concern to me, especially for fire, because the fire goes so fast out there with people that are homeless that might need to cook out there in that sagebrush. And, and i just like to state my opinion that I, I'm a, against that site. Thank you. Point of reference, which fire district is that? I have no idea. It comes to you with all the... It's right. One. It's fire in the middle. Point. North side of Bensel's Umatel, south side of Bensel's Service. Okay. It's a problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who's present who would like to speak? Is there anybody who's uh, connected with us, hopefully still connected with us, who would like yeah, to come? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. This is Paul McDonough, and I live at 30240 Bensel Road. Uh, kind of echoing a lot of the same sentiments as uh, people have already said. The safety aspect of that location that's there is not very good. There's no sidewalk. There's no lighting. Uh, the traffic uh, between the asphalt pipe there the Amazon data center, all the traffic that has increased through there, and just the daily traffic on Bentville Road between 395 and River Road is horrendous. Um, you guys say that the busing will be available and taxi service. Well, the bus doesn't run 24 hours, neither does the taxi service. They don't run 24 hours. You see numerous times people complaining that they were unable to get a hold of anybody for the taxi because they don't have staffing. So there will not be 24 hour accessibility for them to come and go. I volunteered numerous times previous years at the warming centers, and I know that they have police contact at the warming centers. So with no nobody in pretty much Humatilla County or state police having 24 hour uh, service available, you're gonna have to draw from Humatilla and Hermiton PD in both those places pretty much say, unless there's a deputy or a trooper in route, they're not going to respond. So your response time will be very, very limited, raising the safety aspect for volunteers at those sites. The um, other part of it is, is they have a hard time getting volunteers for the warming center as it is. So how are you going to get people to drive five miles out of town when they didn't want to drive half a mile or two blocks out of town to volunteer. I think there's lots better locations that could be chosen, chosen that will be safer for the uh, foot traffic. Um, the fairground is not used 24 hours or 24 seven and it's not utilized through, uh, 365 days out of the year. There's definitely places up there that you could that have water, sewer, and all that stuff accessible where you won't have to bring it in or bust it out. I'm open if you guys have any questions that I could answer for you. But that's the way I got to stick on that. Thank you very much for taking the time. Anyone else online who wishes to speak? I know there was numerous people on here at one time, but between the technical difficulties, and they've been disconnected.
Okay, Commissioner Dorn, you want to add something now? No, I, I would like to just thank everybody for the comments. I think that's important that we hear that. Um, the uh, group that, that's working to put this together uh, understands wherever we put it is not going to be popular for that area. There is no doubt about it. The, uh, when I ran for this office, I knew there were going to be hard decisions, but it's hard looking out in the crowd of friends that object to what we're doing. So I, 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 uh, I take everything that you say to heart. There's no doubt about that. I'm not here to make any promises. Um, but I know that, as I mentioned earlier, we need a solution. And uh, Sam brought up a couple of places that I hadn't considered. I do have a long list of phone, phone suggestions from other folks. Um, the one thing I would like to, to re, reiterate, even though there's a, and I have it from this chair too, is that trusting government, um, we, we, we have that same distrust at times, talking to people that we deal with every day. So we, we understand that. But when we do say temporary, um, that, that is what the, the goal is right now. Again, you're right. I don't know what what the future brings. There, there is no doubt about that. But right now, we're just trying to find a solution for a problem that we have no choice in, in uh, addressing. So I do appreciate all the comments from everyone today um, and taking the time to, uh, to, to make those. I know that it's never easy. Um, I've been on that side and, and making comments, especially on the opposition side, uh, it's never easy. So I'm going to let it go with that uh, and just know that everybody has my phone number. It's on the, uh, it's on the web page, both my personal cell phone number and, and my uh, county cell phone number. And I, I start getting calls around 6.30 every morning and I, I, you're, you're free to call me at any time. Commissioner Dorn, I know there's been some comment about awareness that this was happening and people did not know. We aren't actually driving the bus on this. I know that as well. So how how would the interested parties remain in the loop? You know, I I don't know the, a, a good answer to that other than I uh, stay. stay uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, did we get everybody's? Ron, did you leave an email address? Yeah. Wait, were you signed uh, in there? When you signed in? I will. Can you guys all please, or a phone number? Um, phone number or an email address and I'll make sure that our group gets a copy of this this information to start with um, and, and hopefully there's folks on from Stepping Stone I, I think that they've done just Stepping Stone has just done an amazing job of making sure that there's a route to a solution whether it's this property or other property I know that the city of Umatilla took the thank you Ron and took took the lead on this um, and really grab a very tough subject and, and is trying to find a solution. We jumped in um, when Stepping Stones brought this. We, they actually brought this to us, which I thought was a great, great site, to be honest with you. Um, uh, and, and I think it needs to be, be looked at. I, I, uh, I understand everybody's concerns. But let's keep you guys informed. Know that we have to come up with a solution. Um, and, and that's that's our goal as a group with the cities and the whatnot. Cynthia, I'm sorry. We, it, I just have just one quick couple of words. Your question to him just a minute ago, um, Commissioner Murdoch. When a person does something, propose something on their personal property, it has to go through the planning department and everybody gets written notices mailed to them. Maybe you would think about that so we can be informed. Emails and phone numbers and people that are elderly taking care of their sick ones is not going to respond. People aren't on Zoom, people don't do the phone, and people can't travel here. If something is proposed on any piece of property as a citizen, it has to go through the planning department and everybody within a given radius is notified. Right, and, and that is a process if there is uh, uh, land use changes and those type of things. Like I mentioned earlier, um, this is what we're looking at is just a conditional use. It does fit in. Um, with the, with the land now, so a conditional use um, is not the same process, but we will discuss making sure that we do that even if this 
if if we look for a conditional use for this piece of property. We haven't got to that stage, Cynthia, so it, that's one of the reasons it hasn't been done. Okay. All right, so that, I thank you all for coming. Thank Real you. Quick, Sam, can I get your phone number on, on this? Because I'm very interested in that. Oh, can I get your phone number? Check on that. Hello? Does this one have the water? No. That's, 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 you see who wounds it. Oh, are you talking, Sam? Are you talking down by the substation? I'm going to go call the okay. email on the power station. Right. 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 That's where they took in all those. It used to be five houses. Right. Here they that ground. Did you say the county owned them? I think I think the county took them. I'll check. I'm not sure. Yeah, I want to check on that. Not to be enough for the homeless, but when they ship Pendleton's and Milton Free Waters and everything, they need at least a ten acre site. You know, and it's good. Thank you for giving us time to speak. I know um, there's not very many yes, of us, and I know you're yes, really working your portion, at this, but you've got to understand that several of us are, are very skeptical, especially after what had transpired on Airport Road with all of the people that live on that road and how things just got pushed through and people weren't taken into consideration, their voices weren't heard, their lands were taken, property pins were just uprooted. I mean, you've got to understand that we don't trust you to make the right decision sometimes. You just pick something and you run with it and it affects all of us greatly and I know we're just a small majority of people but please take into consideration the people that are hard-working citizens pay their property taxes and own their land thanks Cynthia we got to move on with the agenda all right the next item is the any information I get I'll make sure I'm sorry can I get you folks can you guys out in the hallway so we can finish our meeting thank you so much we're putting our email addresses. Yes, you can. Yeah, yes, that'd be that fine. Be Thank, you. Thank you. And then you can Thank actually you. just leave that with Kathy at the front at the okay, information yeah. booth. That'd, that'd be great. great. That would work. Thank you. All right, the next item is the Umatilla Basin Watershed Council presentation. Melinda, how's it, that? So it, it is just this pinky. So this is your background information. <coughs> the board might be on the line. Michael, are you on the line? Hey, it's Michael Ward from the Watershed Council. Uh, good day, Commissioner Schaefer, Murdoch, and Duran. Can you hear me all right? Yes. You're coming through very clear. Great. Sorry I can't be there in person today, um, but glad this worked out. I had a bit of technical difficulties, but y'all seem to have worked it out for us, so thank you. Uh, I, I don't have a presentation printout for you today. I was just really coming before you to still talk about the uh, um, Stanley Creek culvert and it uh, looks like luckily Tom is on this call too and so he's uh, worked with us to the original 15% design of that project which uh, stalled through the year with COVID and some other cultural resource things that we ran into but good news is the project is now moving on and we're going to wrap up the design uh, where I came, what I came for you get today to ask for was a uh, either a written letter or just an email will suffice that uh, acknowledges the county as the landowner of that culvert um, and that y'all are aware and, it's a, and uh, that we are um, working forward to uh, restore fish passage at that project site. Um, most likely with a bridge, unless we get in the design and Tom really feels that a culvert is uh best for the county to own um so that that'll that'll be hashed out at the 30 to 60 percent design phase again we're still stalled at 15 um but yeah that's basically what i was here for today is to uh one of the paperworks that i was lacking for the state was uh an acknowledgement that uh from the county as the owners of that culvert that y'all are aware we are working on the project i had a, sec a signed secured match from y'all about two years ago and I, I put that in the packet, but then the state came back and said that 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 didn't uh, that didn't really work. Is like a, we don't need a formal landowner agreement; just a simple email acknowledging that you know, the county, as the landowner, is aware that we are in the process of uh, of working on, on restoring fish passage at that culvert. Our county road culvert and bridge czar is on the line, so uh, <laughs> perfect. Would you like to weigh in? Uh, as, as long as the board has has no problem with it, Commissioner, this is Tom Fellows, County Public Works Director. Um, 
I will need to confer with uh, Doug Olson uh, when he gets back. And I, I think, uh, I certainly think that's doable um, to get them some recognition that this, that uh, the county does control uh, that piece of road. Okay, I would set the motion that uh, we had pending, pending approval from council. So moved. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thanks, commissioners, and thanks, Tom. And uh, I'll keep Tom in the loop here, and um, at, at each design stage, uh, in particular. And um, you know, uh, fingers crossed that we'll have be able to implement this project next summer. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Thanks. The next slide is the burn ban. Bob, are you going to take care of that? Good morning, commissioners. Bob Walder, County Planning Director. Um, here today, uh, we've had a request to uh, lift the agricultural and non-agricultural burn bans. And so the proposal is that we would remove the agricultural burn ban for today, September 22nd at noon. And the non-agricultural burn ban or residential burn ban uh, will be removed October 1st. Um, this would coincide with uh, what other fire districts typically do. Uh, Umatilla County Fire District 1, for example, typically removes their burn ban October 1st. And this also aligns with previous years on, on how we've handled this. Mr. Chair, I'd move that uh, we'd remove the agricultural burn on today's date at noon today and remove the non-ag residential burn ban beginning on October 1st, 2021, and have staff issue a press release immediately following this action. Second. I'm fair to say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. The next thank item, you. Is, the next item uh, deals with our, our east lot uh, along court. Court Street. Um, we're requesting approval to remove the. Dan Lai, do you want, are you on there? Yes, I am. Good morning, Commissioners. Dan Lai with Administrative Services. I'd like to thank all three of you for attending our little tour that we had earlier this week to see our our facilities that we have over there and what we're working with. And before <laughs> you is a proposal to remove the building structure there, that modular building to demo it. And also the, uh, what, what would you call the detail shop, that little bay area there. And Anderson, Rod Anderson Construction has a bid there for $7,040. And also there is a map included with that pinky there that shows the uh, facility where it's at on the corner of Court and Sixth Street there. And Mark's on the line too. If you have some other questions on the demolition and stuff, um, a couple of things. One is, does this? I know we talked about the demolition removal of the old sign standards and lighting. Does this bid include that those expenses? Yes. How soon can it be gone? <laughs> Yeah, let me make sure I have that clear, though. You said adding the lighting? No, I just wanted to make sure this this quote included that. Or this Not adding the lighting, but removing the... the removing screen. the sign. And then what about lighting? Yeah, we'll, we'll add the lighting. Uh, the electrician will deal with that. Okay. But we don't have a quote this is just for the demo of the property. And how soon would that be removed? uh he was going to try and fit it into his schedule as soon as he could so as soon as you give the green light i'll find out a, a date in that case mr chair i'd like to make a motion to approve the quote from ron anderson construction in the amount of seven thousand forty dollars to remove the detail shop and modular from the lot east of the courthouse second could, would you be agreeable to add as soon as possible to that motion <laughs> Friendly motion or addition would be gladly accepted. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, commissioners. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Yeah, let there be no doubt based upon our tour that it, there's no alternative but to get rid of it as fast as possible. All right. I agree. Yes, it creates an issue with the, the homeless and, and other items, yes. Yeah, it's inside and out. Okay. We had an item to the agenda, which I indicated to you we had we had touched on in a staff meeting once before. The timing, uh, I think, is relatively interesting uh, to be considering an item of this nature based on uh, milestone was just celebrated. Uh, respect with respect to the end of the Vietnam War. Uh, we've been invited to join other counties in Oregon that are contributing $5,000 each to help create a Vietnam memorial. Uh, a number of counties have already done so. And uh, I would entertain a motion if you're so inclined for us to join that list. Chairman Murdoch, um, if, I, if I started on my support for this, I'd, we, I'd be speaking for a long, long time. So I'm just going to make a motion that we, we do forward a $5,000 contribution to this program and that we also take advantage when it's finished on the, on the mall at, at the Capitol so that, um, that we can all visit it and have those discussions. It means a lot to me that I make that motion. I couldn't agree more in a second. All right. Um, We'll take a vote. I'm quite certain this will be a unanimous vote. Uh, recognizing, I, I would add to that, recognizing all of those uh, individuals who served in Vietnam. So, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, thank you. Commissioner reports? No, They're being done? We'll hear them. Did you bring that up on your computer, Bill? 